So we discovered a novel class of metal drugs that have the unique ability to induce programmed cell death in cancer cells. This form of programmed cell death is also known as apoptosis, a form of cell death that is high, highly desirable to induce in cancer cells. What makes these class of compounds particularly interesting is their ability to not induce the same uh, extent of cell death in normal cells. We then went ahead and patented these compounds and tested several of them against several different cell lines. In the majority of the cases, these cells induce uh, intrinsic apoptotic cell death, which is particularly exciting given that cancer cells have uniquely adapted bioenergetics. In batch testing, we revealed that these uh, compounds have the ability to affect brain, skin, breast, esophageal, liver, adenocarcinoma, blood cells, um, very exciting finds indeed. What we also discovered in toxicology studies is that up to three grams per kilogram could be tolerated by rats without being adversely affected. So collectively and taken together, we believe that we've actually stumbled on a unique class of new chemotherapeutic drugs that could potentially uh, aid cancer patients. So we were working on the crystallography of this silver phosphine compound, an enormous group of compounds. Crystallography basically means we're interested in the actual shape of the molecules, how they form in a solid state. Now, this was an ongoing process in my uh, research group, and we were interested if there were other um, aspects to this research. So the nice thing about this group of compounds is if you, if you make them, if you synthesize them in the lab, depending on the actual recipe, you get a different compound. So you get a, this group of compounds that can be tweaked, that can be changed every time you change the recipe of how you make these compounds. And if you look at the commercial starting materials and, you, and calculate the amount of compounds that can be made, we're talking about a huge group of compounds. I'm talking about 3,000 compounds at the minimum. Um, and the best part about it is they're very cheap. It's a very low cost synthesis, it's easy, it can be done in every lab if you know the recipe properly. And they, the, <coughs> the, the synthesis is pretty reliable. So every time you repeat the synthesis according to the recipe, you get the same compound. Now the, we took some of these compounds and started looking for, uh, for additional um, opportunities, uh, additional properties. And we were lucky that the first five or so compounds that we chose showed anti-cancer behavior. These compounds were killing the cancer cells at a very low concentration, whereas the healthy cells remained alive. What do I mean with a low concentration? We're talking about a concentration that's 10 times lower than, that, than the effective concentration of a commercial you daily used anti-cancer agent. What do I mean with non-toxic? We're talking about a number of grams per kilogram of body weight in mouse studies, which is equivalent to about three grams per kilogram of body weight, which would be the toxicity of vitamin C approximately. This research is part of a 10-year project by Prof. Reinhard Mayboom from Chemistry on the left and Prof. Marianne Cronier from Biochemistry in the middle at the University of Johannesburg. Dr. Zelinda Engelbrecht from Biochemistry on the right is the lead researcher for these results in the Biometals Journal. To see the research article, follow the DOI link at the bottom of the screen.